Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2018 Victoria Korea Business Forum. 여러분 안녕하세요. 2018년 Victoria Korea Business Forum에 와 주셔서 감사합니다. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land upon which today we are meeting, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. I pay my respects to their elders, past and present. My name is Liz Griffin, and I will be your MC for today. Today, I wear three hats in my role as MC. First and foremost, I am the Executive Director of the Australia Korea Business Council. I am also the President of the Australia Korea Young Professionals Association and a past recipient of the Victorian Government's Hamer Scholarship Program to Korea. My working career has been devoted to promoting Australia Korea business and economic relations. So it's very exciting for me to see so many people here today, keen to learn more about the opportunities that our bilateral relationship presents. So thank you all for coming. I'd also like to thank the Victorian Minister for Trade and Investment, Innovation and Digital Economy and Small Business, the Honourable Philip Deladakis, for attending this morning, as well as our highly respected list of guest speakers for agreeing to share your wisdom and thoughts. We look forward to listening to your unique perspectives. To put it mildly, it's been a very exciting time for the region. On Tuesday, we saw something that many people never expected to see in their lifetime. The meeting between Kim Jong-un and Donald Trump. I, like most people in this room, read the tweets, saw the photographs, and followed the live cover coverage with a healthy dose of cynicism and bewilderment. But while much remains to be seen, North Korea engaging with the US and the rest of the world could represent the first steps of something more significant and productive. In addition, yesterday's local elections in South Korea were held, which consolidated the President Moon Jae-in's party's position. Moon has just commenced his second year as Korea's president and is riding a wave of popularity, fueled by support of Korea's younger generation. He is humble, highly accessible, and appears genuinely concerned for the people and their welfare. He presents a friendly, approachable and upbeat image which has been very well received by the Korean people. And to bring it back all to Australia, we're here today to celebrate the Victoria-Korea relationship. Victoria and South Korea share an expanding relationship based on two-way trade in goods and services and strong education and cultural ties. The ties have been strengthened following the opening of a Victorian government business office in Seoul in 2014. South Korea is Victoria's eighth largest trading partner and seventh largest merchandise export market. It is also a major market for Victorian aluminium, meat and wool, and is of increasing importance for emerging industries such as energy, health and aged care, tourism, and international education. South Korea is one of Victoria's major import sources of refined petroleum and motor vehicles. Victoria's sister, city, sister state relationship with Busan City underpins Victoria's economic and people-to-people -people links with South Korea. The sister state relationship was established in 1994 and will next year celebrate its 25th anniversary. Today's event has been organised by, by the five leading organisations working in the Australia Korea space. First, COTRA, Korea's trade and investment agency, is dedicated to helping Australians invest in Korea. You will hear shortly from Trade Commissioner Pyon, who will outline some of the investment opportunities in Korea. And thank you, Kotra, for your sponsorship today. The Victorian Government. We will soon hear from Minister Daladakis, who will expand on our important relationship with Korea. But I also just wanted to acknowledge Nicole Andrews and maybe just quickly ask her to stand up. Nicole is a fantastic resource in the Victorian Government, so I encourage you to, to meet Nicole in the breaks if you don't know her already. Third, uh, the Korean Consul, Consulate General, um, based here in Melbourne, and the Korean Consul General will be, will be providing some closing remarks later today. Fourth, the Australia Korea Young Professionals Association. This association is a not-for-profit organisation that aims to build awareness and strengthen networks among young professionals aged between 25 and 40 with an interest in the Australia-Korea relationship. We have all of the committee members here today, so I might just quickly ask them to stand so that we know who they are. Thank you. 
And lastly, the Australia Career Business Council, of which I am the Executive Director. The AKBC is a member-based organisation tasked with promoting trade and investment between Australia and Korea. The Australia Career Business Council is open for membership and we host a range of events such as this one today to help our members succeed in Korea. We also conduct doing business in Korea workshops. These workshops are designed to help senior executives better understand Korea's history, culture, society, economy and political landscape to enable them to succeed in Korea. The biggest event that we hold each year, however, is our joint meeting with our counterpart in Korea, the Korea Australia Business Council. The chair of our Korean counterpart is the CEO of POSCO, Australia's single largest customer. And our chair is the Honourable Mark Vale, former Deputy Prime Minister of Australia. These two chairmen lead the senior delegation and this year we will be meeting over two days from the 29th and 30th of October. And Minister Deladakis will be pleased to know that we're meeting in Pusan, Victoria's sister city. Planned activities for these days include a site visit to the new port in Pusan, welcome dinner, the Future Leaders Forum and a breakfast briefing by the Australian Ambassador. So if anyone is interested, please reach out to me later. We also have two representatives from the AKBC board here today, Simon Yu from EY and Bill Patterson, the former Australian ambassador to Korea, who we'll be hearing from shortly. In addition to the huge lineup of speakers today, I just quickly wanted to mention that we also have two VIP guests joining us today. First, Caroline Dunlop, the president of Amore Pacific. Caroline has been extremely busy over the last couple of weeks and has recently succeeded in opening the first Innisfree store in Melbourne last week, which received such a huge response. So congratulations on your efforts, Caroline, and welcome. <laughs> and Laura Anderson, from uh, the chair of SBI Global. Uh, Laura Anderson was recently uh, invited by the Korean government to travel to Korea under the Korea's Foundation's Distinguished Guest Program. So thank you for joining us today, Laura. I also just wanted to give a quick shout out to Michael from Minuteman Press to say thank you very much for the printing services that you provided for today. So today, no doubt, we are set for a great day exploring some of the opportunities between Victoria and Korea. Before I introduce the Minister, I will first outline the day's proceedings. We will start with some introductory remarks, followed by session one, which focuses on investment opportunities. After session one, we will break for morning tea and coffee and then come back in here for session two, which focuses on furthering the understanding of Australia-Korea relations. We also have a lucky door prize today. Now, I'm running out of time, so I will explain what this is uh, after the morning tea break. Um, but we do, as a hint, we do have the CEO of Baseball Australia here who will, who will uh, present the prize later today. I'm also just going to quickly mention that we are doing some filming in the room just opposite, uh, so you will see some of our speakers come in and out throughout the day. Uh, we hope that this doesn't cause too much destruction and appreciate your understanding. So without further ado, I would like to now introduce the Victorian Minister for Trade and Investment, Minister Daladakis. So thank you to Liz for uh, what is going to be a fantastic day. I've got no doubt that uh, we're going to see an expansion of both the Victorian and Korean relationship, but hopefully an expansion of your membership. So for those people in the room that are not members of the uh, association, I implore you to join and support Liz so that we can have more events uh, like this one and indeed uh, support the growing relationship. Now, I wish to make note that the choice of shirt this morning was not an accident. The choice of shirt, and I should stand next to the graphics uh, because then it would be far more apparent, uh, was chosen to pay tribute, of course, to uh, both our countries. And uh, I must say that it's an absolute delight to be able to speak at the event this morning. Uh, I'm about to uh, shoot off to Ballarat, hence the slightly more casual uh, approach uh, to my, uh, my dressing this morning again. 
But let me uh, formally begin by acknowledging the traditional owners on the land of which we meet and pay my respects to their elders uh, past and present. Let me uh, also acknowledge, please, the Consul General, uh, Consul General uh, Kim, uh, and uh, we met uh, just before we got underway this morning. And it's fair to say that there is uh, a lot of work for us to do together. Uh, we have developed a strong relationship since I was the Trade Minister with the Korean Consulate, uh, with obviously Consul General Joe uh, before, and so we look forward to continuing that work as well. And of course, a trade relationship is two ways. Uh, it's not about one side winning at the expense of another. It's about making sure that we provide opportunity to both our people. And as uh, the Consul General and I talked about, the economic relationship is only one part, and it should never be the part. It should never be the only part. It should always be reflective of an opportunity to provide job, investment, growth, uh, and to see our two peoples work more closely together. But of course, the cultural component, for me, is as important, if not more important, because to enable uh, trade relations, enable opportunity for our companies to work together, what we need to do is ensure that we continue to build that trust, that friendship, that relationship. Because once that trust is built, once that respect is seen, then of course everything else is made possible from there. So in effect, uh, whilst I have the title Minister for Trade and Investment amongst others, really uh, my title would be far more correctly and aptly named if it was the Minister for Fr uh, Friendship and relationship uh, development. We also have uh, the Trade Commissioner, uh, Byun, uh, lovely to have you here, and, and both, of course, the Consul General and the Trade Commissioner are relatively new to their postings, uh, and I just want you to see that the weather today is just normal everyday weather in Melbourne. <laughs> uh, and if you're uh, ever concerned about the weather, just wait five minutes and uh, hopefully it will change. <laughs> to Bill Patterson, of course, the former uh, ambassador, Australian ambassador to Korea and board member of the Australian Korea Business Council. It's a great pleasure to have you here. And uh, Laura Anderson, the chair of LaunchVic. Uh, obviously, Liz mentioned her in the opening remarks, but LaunchVic is part of my innovation portfolio, a $60 million startup fund. Uh, and uh, Laura, it's nice to see you here. And last but not least, and I do uh, leave Liz to last, Liz Griffin, of course, uh, who needs really no uh, introduction. Uh, a former Hamer scholarship uh, participant and winner for Victoria. Of course, for those of you that are not aware of what the Hamer scholarships do, they uh, provide uh, Victorians an opportunity to go and study uh, overseas in Korea and China. And recently I announced Latin America as well. And so to have Liz as one of our Hamer scholarship uh, participants and winners from Korea are uh, now being, of course, the executive director of the uh, Korea Business Council uh, is a great example to others what can be achieved and what pathways do exist uh, for people to participate. Now, it would be no fun uh, if I came here today and didn't have something special to announce. Um, and I do. Because as I said, that would be no fun at all. So what I want to announce is that the Victorian government supports the relationship deeply. Uh, as I explained to the Consul General, uh, I have a very personal relationship with Korea myself. In fact, uh, my children's primary school, although my, daughter, my oldest daughter just started high school this year, my children's primary school is Ormond Primary. Uh, of course, in Ormond, uh, for want of a better term, uh, but the significance of Ormond Primary uh, to this room is that for nearly, uh, well, over 20 years, in fact, the language uh, taught in the school is Korean. So my daughters, uh, my oldest daughter, my youngest daughter, and now my son, who just started primary school this year, have all been learning Korean as part of their daily uh, education at the school. And I think it's important to reflect that uh, it's a government primary school that teaches Korean uh, and uh, that opportunity is there to continue. And I remember when I first told Consul General Joe that my 
daughter, the first time I met the Consul General, my daughter had just won the Korean language prize for her year level uh, at school and he was quite excited uh, and offered me uh, a whole range of uh, teachers to be able to assist my children's uh, development of their language skills. Uh, unfortunately, of course, I wasn't able to take him up on that offer, but uh, suffice to say, uh, the language came in handy. Uh, again, I, I told this story to the Consul General. I do want to share it with you because it, it displays that the world we live in is so much smaller today than it's ever been. In early April, um, my family, my mother and my, my wife and my children went to uh, China for a holiday, uh, during school holidays. Uh, we went there because my mother was born in Shanghai, my grandparents having fled Nazi Germany in late 1938-39. While we were in Shanghai uh, on one, one evening, uh, we went uh, uh, on the Bund, for those of you that know Shanghai well, we went across the road uh, to look at the Pudong and the depth of people was about five metres. It was huge. The amount of people there was amazing. And we wiggled our way to the front and there in front uh, of where we were standing were a group of about six young uh, Asian women in their early 20s. And they saw my children and the Western faces and they started to speak to them in English. And as my children started to ask them where they were from, they were from Seoul. They were from Korea. So they then, my children, started to speak to them in Korean. <laughs> and you, the look of amazement and surprise on the faces of these young women was just something that you wish you could bottle up. There we were, an Australian family in China, some young Korean women in Shanghai, them speaking English to us and my children speaking Korean to them. I tell you, you couldn't have scripted it any better. But it's a great example of the opportunities that are provided to people around the world and why we need to be a part of both our region and more importantly, a part of the world trade and also the opportunities that they realise. So coming back to uh, the opportunities, to have the uh, the Victorian Korean Chamber, the Australian Korean Chamber with their office here in Melbourne is very important to us. And so it's my great pleasure to announce to you that whilst we have had a trial previously of the Korean uh, Chamber at International Chamber House, I can announce to you today that after some slight rectification works that we need to uh, make to Chamber House in terms of space, that by the end of this year we expect to be able to provide a permanent home to the Chamber at International Chamber House. I thank you for that, but it's no less than what uh, the Chamber deserves, it's no less than what our relationship deserves. It shows the investment, it shows the continued importance and it shows the fact that the Victorian Government continues to be serious about maintaining that relationship, developing it, and indeed strengthening it. We, of course, have much to uh, talk about in terms of success. The Korea-Australia uh, Free Trade Agreement has seen already significant increases. When I was in Korea uh, some time ago, we could already celebrate that in the short time that the Free Trade Agreement had come into uh, action, that we had significant sales in table grapes from Victoria, we had significant sales in Victorian lamb uh, as a result of work that both we and the MLA, the Meat Livestock uh, Industry Association, had contributed. In fact, in, if you go to Korea now, whilst previously it was unlikely, now you will probably see lamb on Korean barbecue menus. Uh, and so I pay tribute to the work that MLA has done in that area to forge a new way and a new opportunity within that industry too. I want to finish up on saying that the Hamer scholarships, I started talking about Liz as being a Hamer scholar, I want to finish on this point because this is very important for us. Uh, nine Victorian Hamer scholarship recipients uh, will attend uh, Korean universities in the next 12 months. Uh, 50 Victorian students have participated 
in our Hamer scholarships in Korea to date. This investment in people above and beyond anything is what we are here to do as a government. This investment in our relationship is beyond what normal governments may think is their duty, but it is what I believe is our primary duty. And so I want to finish on thanking those people that contribute so much of themselves to the relationship and the opportunities we have. Uh, Liz held out Nicole Andrews as uh, being worthy of your applause. Nicole doesn't do it alone either. Uh, we don't have these events by accident or by osmosis. So I just wish to thank each and every one, whether they're departmental staff, whether they're people that volunteer their time in the chamber, uh, I want to uh, finish on thanking them for their investment in our relationship, for their investment in ensuring that our people-to-people -people links is something that we value, is something that we develop. And I want to wish you well today. Uh, to the Consul General, I want to thank you. Uh, I believe that uh, we have a very exciting time ahead uh, and I couldn't be happier to have you here in Melbourne and work with you as well. So thank you very much. Good luck for today. I won't be putting a card into the draw because sometimes I win them and that, <laughs> that gets a bit awkward. Uh, in fact, uh, I can tell you last year I was at a football game as a guest of the Western Bulldogs and I'm a St Kilda supporter, so I've not had much love this year or uh, enjoyment anyway. And the prize in the uh, business card draw was a beautiful piece of uh, Aboriginal art. And the look on the MC's face when uh, my card was pulled out, uh, and they looked at me and they said, are we going to do a redraw? And I said, no, I will be taking that. Uh, so I will not be putting my card in today. Uh, but that doesn't mean to say that I'm not interested in the prize. So I wish you well today. I thank you for coming. But more importantly, I thank you for your support in our relationship. Thank you.